As I showed in my previous video, I made a YouTube subscriber counter with an e-paper display and the ESP32 that connects to the internet once a day to refresh the screen and goes to deep sleep mode to preserve battery. Now that I got everything working, I want to go through all the steps so you can make your own. I include all the files and links on the description of this video. If you never use an ESP32 on your Arduino IDE, you need to install the board going to Files, Preferences, and copy this link and put it here. Then go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, search for ESP32, and install. Remember that you also need to install a few libraries. In the sketch, you need to add, beside the network name and network password, the YouTube channel IDE and YouTube API key for your channel. To get your YouTube channel API key, go to the Google API website and make sure you are logged in into your Gmail account. In the dashboard, click Create Project, choose a name for your project, and click Create. You should see Enable APIs and Services. Click there and then write in the search box for YouTube Data API version 3. Enable it and create credentials. Click API key, API restrictions and select YouTube Data API version 3. Click create and then you'll see your key in here. Copy that and put it on the sketch. You also need your channel ID. You can find it on your advanced account settings and your channel ID is here. Put that also on the sketch. To test if it's working, Go to this link, replacing this part with your channel IDE and this with your YouTube API key. You should see something like this. You could use an ESP32 development board, but they consume too much power when they are in deep sleep mode. And since I wanted to use batteries, I decided to use a bare ESP32 module and solder the minimum components to it. Sounds annoying, but it's not as complicated as you might think. To make it easier, I designed a PCB especially for this project, and you can order it from PCBWay using my Gerber files. It costs just 5 US dollars for 10 PCBs, and the process is very simple. I listed all the components that goes on the PCB, but there's one that requires some testing before it's soldering. I choose this voltage regulator because it's very efficient, consuming very little power while not having a load. But I discovered that not all units had the same performance. I bought a bunch of them and measured the current without a load to see which one is the best to use with my PCB. This is because I want the batteries to last a long time and it's critical to get very low power consumption when the ESP32 is in deep sleep mode. So you should test them without a load and choose the one with the least power consumption. The design is fairly simple with the voltage regulator, the voltage divider to monitor the battery, the buttons, and I put a transistor to send power to the display only when it's refreshing. The module to convert USB to serial is over here. To start the assembly, remove the protective film from the display and attach the display to the 3D printer part. I like to keep everything in a way that allows taking everything apart, so I recommend using something like masking tape to attach the display to the frame. 
screw this adapter using M3 screws and glue this part to the display frame in a way that the cable when connected to the display has a natural curvature and align correctly. Then put these spacers on each corner. I use super glue but you can use any glue you want. For the battery holder, I put it in a position and then add the glue on the edges. Now prepare the UART module for installation. Since the holes for the screws are too small, I make them bigger with a 2mm drill bit. The second thing to modify is to reinforce the USB connector, adding more solder on the pads on each side of the USB connector. Then screw the UART module to the back cover. Then glue the buttons. Also the wall mount cover. The e-paper display should come with this adapter, but it's a bit too thick, so we need to modify it by removing this connector. It's surprisingly easy to remove. Just use pliers and pull it off. Remove also the little pieces of metal from the connector that might remain in the module. Then install it on the back cover. Remember that the nuts goes in the inside part. Also screw the PCB. Place all the cables and secure them with zip ties. It's also a good idea to label the connectors if you choose to use connectors. Make sure to test everything again and join the leg and leg support to put them on the back cover. To install each clip, make sure to put everything in the right order. The final nut goes against the first one to lock themselves. My shadow box came with these flaps that I removed because they break too easily after bending them a few times. Now we're ready to put the display assembly and the back cover assembly into the shadow box. All this will allow us to mark where the holes should be made for the locking clips to extend and support the back cover assembly against the shadow box. When everything is ready, put everything on the shadow box in the following order. Connect the Rebound Flex cable to the display. Turn the battery holder switch on. And put the back cover on the shadow box. And I guess that's it. I would like to give a big thanks to my patrons, especially Stefan, and the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. I hope it helps and see you on the next video. Bye bye.